Welcome back. In this uh, lecture, I will start module 3, which is the radical chain polymerization. The content uh, of this lecture is as follows. I will talk about types of chain growth polymerization and then talk about mechanism and kinetics of radical polymerization. Now, if you recall our discussion from lecture 4 or 5 about the chain growth polymerization or simply chain polymerization. We discussed that if we have a set of monomer and we have an initiator, we require an initiator which initiates the chain and once the chain initiates, we have the monomers getting one after one at the end and making the polymer chain and more and more such monomer initiator actually generates. So, we get more and more such chain and eventually these propagating chains get terminated and we get polymer sample. So, in this case we require initiator to initiate chain and growth occur by successive addition of monomer units to the limited number of growing chains we discussed. And one important thing we also discussed that in this case at the end of the polymerization we need to isolate the polymer chains and our actual product is the isolated polymer chains, not the mixture of the or the, or the, or the final mixture of the uh, after the reaction. Generally, it is a the polymerization formed by addition reaction and as you can understand that immediately the initiation happen large polymer chains starts produ producing. So, if I actually plot a conversion conversion or say or time say with molecular weight or size or size, then obviously within very immediately after starting the reaction you actually land up getting high molecular weight. This would be even faster I should uh, make it more narrower. So, actually initially at the low conversion itself we are getting large number of monomer units in a chain. So, the molecular weight of the polymer actually is high even at very low conversion. Now, if I this is a normal chain polymerization where termination also takes place as the time goes on. If by any means if we can stop this termination reaction then the chains keep on increasing in molecular weight and in that case we get a linear increase in molecular weight conversion. So, this case we are doing a chain polymerization without without termination of the propagating chains. This is a normal case where we get statistical termination and this is the almost this is the standard normal polymerization chain polymerization process and this is this is a special case we require special technique we will discuss when the time comes. So, in normally as we said this is the case where uh, even at the beginning at low conversion we get high molecular weight formation and as time goes on at more and more monomer gets polymerized the amount of polymer increases not the molecular weight. So, with time molecular weight almost remains same except the very last few Mm, last time last at the end of the polymerization, but during entire duration the molecular weight remain almost same, but the amount of polymer increases with time. Now, 
the type of chain growth polymerization depends on, on the initiator which we just discussed, what type of initiator we are using. Depending upon the initiator, we can have a free radical polymerization, cationic polymerization or anionic polymerization. If the initiator is a cation, then we call it a cation polymerization and so on. Now, which of this initiation mechanism we should try? We should basically which looking at the monomer structure, we should actually design what is the type of chain polymerization we should employ. If I generally write a structure I star, which is either could be a radical cation or anion, it basically attacks and get a first initiation step like this. Now, it could be a radical anion or cation. Now, depending on this substituent y, whether it can stabilize this radical or cation or anion, depending on that, it will decide whether the reaction will proceed or not. If, if this species is very unstable, then we will not get sufficient molecular weight or the reaction will not proceed. And if it is too stable, that it is not in reactive at all, then also it is a problem. But in normal scenario, if we can stabilize this intermediate, this radical cation or anion, then the polymerization would be comparably feasible. Now, if I have a cation or if you have a say anion to begin with, if I have an electron withdrawing group either by inductive effect or by resonance then we can we can actually stabilize this species and have a fruitful polymerization. So, we will just have a table to show depending upon why what type of polymerization chain polymerization is a feasible. So, if I write C O R and this type of why is uh, this functionality? So, say then if I have a anion, if say I have a anion and a y is C O R, then I can actually stabilize this like this, or if I have a C N triple bond N, then I can stabilize this. So, in this case anion is a feasible reaction or if I have a radical also, I can also similarly stabilize this intermediate. Hence, for this type of substituent, you can understand that the radical polymerization and and an possible an an polymerization is a feasible one. So, if I write this, so you can it is possible this type of substituent radical polymerization and an an polymerization anionic polymerization is feasible. If I talk about substitution like this, then I can have say I can write this structure of say chain with say cation and I have benzene ring, then I can have a resonance stabilization structure or I can have more and more such stabilized resonance stabilized structure. Now, it can this stabilization can happen if I have a radical, I can have similar resonance structure or 
it is also possible if I have a anion also. So, if I have a substitution like phenyl substitution for example, we are talking about a styrene molecule in this example, I can have all three possible cationic polymerization, anionic polymerization or a radical polymerization that is also true for this structure also we can this can also particip participate in resonance stabilization. So, in this case we can think about that these are this is a possible this case this substitution will lead us have um, this substitution can lead all three types of polymerization. We can if you talk about O R then let me again write the structure Now, this is possible some sort of stabilization is possible by donation of this lone pair on the oxygen. So, in this case this possible to have polymerization by cationic mechanism, but you can understand that if it is a anion or a radical this stabilization would be very difficult. So, in this case we have we have this cationic polymerization possible. If we have this structure it is very difficult because it cannot uh, stabilize there are lone pairs on say halogen, but it also electron withdrawing. So, it is very difficult. So, this type of substitution actually leads to difficulty in polymerization by chain growth polymerization, but if it is happen it happens by radical polymerization. Now, we talked about electronic stabilization this is possible that sterically also it has to be has to be feasible. For example, if there are more substitution in the around the double bond then it is very difficult for this monomer this type of monomers to polymerize. So, it basically almost never polymerize and if there are no substitution or a single substitution is polymerized very f easily. Now, note that in this particular case, ethylene case there is no substitution. So, the stabilization would be difficult. So, in this particular case though it on princip in principle can be polymerized by radically, but because of non existence of any stabilization mechanism we cannot make uh, large molecular weight or sufficiently high molecular weight polyethylene by radical polymerization. This type of substitution usually poly leads to polymerization, but this, this type of stab, uh, substitution actually do not uh, lead to feasibility of the polymerization. So, basically in this slide we learned that it is the number of substitution also important to have a feasible chain polymerization. Now, if we talk about the structural arrangement of the monomer units during polymerization for example, if I just write uh, anything uh, any rad radical cation or uh, could be radical cation or anion and it can attack this carbon so that we get this structure or it can attack uh, in that case we get
the structure. Now, if this happen continuously or this happen continuously, then we get a structure like and so on. But if if actually alternate or if next one when it attacks next monomer if it does it different way alternate way then we can land up in a different structure which we can. So, in last case which I removed is all similar arrangement but there is another possible arrangement now in this case there is a reversal in the site of attack and so on so, in this case this is we call head to head this is H H head to head arrangement and this is tail to tail arrangement it can do otherwise also tail to tail or head to head. But this is highly unlikely because if you look at the two structure this thing this is always feasible because of the stabilization all of this X and Y group. So, when it further attacks a second monomer it will always prefer to attack here to make so this is always preferred arrangement so, this head to tail arrangement is always preferred than either a head head or tail tail arrangement. So, this head to tail arrangement is almost exclusively formed during chain growth polymerization. There are exception which we are not discussing in this introductory course, but uh, as you can understand that in chain growth polymerization it, it is mostly the head tail arrangement which happens during polymerization. Now, we will look for the mechanism of radical polymerization, we will focus on radical chain polymerization, we will come back to uh, cation or anionic polymerization briefly in later lecture. So, there are three step of radical chain polymerization first step is initiation. So, in this case a initiator molecule actually gets dissociate to form two radical and we have a rate constant associated with this uh, step. For example, I have a AIBN molecule which gets uh, dissociated and form two radical. Now, once this radical forms it immediately attacks a monomer molecule and form this R m dot. So, basically this is r m dot. So, we call this as a primary radical, primary radical and this is because we, this actually next time will attack to another m monomer and start the chain. So, we call this as a chain initiating, initiating radical. So, this is the initiation step once initiation happen we so this as I shown that um, this radical actually first uh, attack the monomer and to form this uh, first chain initiating radical. Second step is propagation. In this case, this 
the first chain initiated radical reacts with another monomer to form a main uh, radical. I am not putting R in all these cases. So, there should be the initiating specific R all that is all this case and for simplicity we are writing instead of m m dot 2 m dots or m 2 dot this for just simple representation and I have a particular rate constant associated with this. Similarly, this attracts to another monomer I get second rate constant I get m 3 and similarly m 4 and in general form I can write m n plus m give you m n plus 1. So, n plus 1 number of monomer are present in this propagating radical and I write a rate constant for this. So, those, pro those propagating radical can actually interact with each other radicals also reactive they can bimolecularly react with each other and terminate the chain and the two way generally possible one is by disproportionation we write corresponding rate constant as k t d termination by disproportionation. So, in that case we get two polymer chain the structure is shown here. So, from two radical propagating radical we get two chains and there is another possible way to do termination by coupling. So, k t c means k termination by coupling in that case these two are joined each other and we get a single polymer chain from two radicals. So, if you recall that these all these chains has started with a radic species chain in it is initiating species at the beginning. So, in this case when the termination is by disproportionation then each polymer will have one chain initiating species and if the coupling is done by if the termination is done by coupling process then each polymer resulting polymer chain will have two chain initiating species. So, in general we write the termination as we write the general termination as m n plus m n m n dot dead polymer k t termination step. Just give you one example now we talked about uh, that each polymer chain will have one initiator molecule if the termination is by couple uh, disproportionation and each polymer chain will have two initiator species at the two ends if the termination is by coupling. So, if I can label if I can quantify the amount or the number of initiator molecules or initiating species per polymer chain then we can find out what is the mode of termination. One example is this in this case AIB was initiated and it was carbon radio level basically. So, I have the molecular weight of the polymer chain is given this and AIBN has it is known that AIBN has an activity AIBN molecule independently has an activity of this number counts per minute per mole. So, 1 mole of AIBN has this many counts and 3.22 grams of this resulting polystyrene has an activity of this. So, what is the mode of termination? So, if I write try to solve this M n for this uh, given by degree of polymerization, degree of polymerization multiplied by the molecular weight of the repeat uh, structural unit which is in this case polystyrene case uh, is 104. So, we write 104 which gives me 1.58 into 10 to the power 6 gram per mole. So, 3.22 gram of 
polystyrene is equivalent to is given to 0 0.3 counts per minute. So, 1 mole of polystyrene, 1 mole polystyrene which is this many gram 1.58 into 10 to the power 6 gram of polystyrene contains how many AIBN? We can just do this simple rearrangement. One mole of AIBN gives this many counts of AIBN. So, this is the number of moles of AIBN. So, as you can see, one mole of polystyrene gives approximately one mole of AIBN, which means one polystyrene chain contains one AIBN. One AIBN complete. Now, each AIBN produces two radical species as we have seen, which means one polystyrene chain contains two initiating species both the side, so R one side and other one side, which means the termination in this case is exclusively by coupling as I have two initiating species in two sides. So, this is just an example how to find out what is the mode of termination. Now, we will go to rate expression. So, initiation happens in two step as we discussed earlier. This is the first step dissociation where we get these two radicals and then immediately it actually initiates the first reacts with the first monomer and we get the. So, these two step together we call initiation step and the we write R i is the rate of initiation and actually depends on the radical initiation process. What is the process by which we are generating this radical? It could be either by heat or by photochemical by shining light or by redox processes. So, this rate of initiation depends on the type of initiation process and we will come back and discuss how to find out R i depending upon what is the type of initiation little later. Now, in in case of propagation, we know that uh, we have written these things, these are the steps of propagation where we have written different rate constant for different steps, but because the reaction is basically same, it is a reaction between a monomer and a radical which is also similar structure. So, it is very, very safe and very justifiable to you know assume that all these uh, reaction proceeds with same rate constant. In this case, we will just remove this 1, 2, 3 n number. So, all these steps actually go by same rate. So, we have same rate constant for all these steps. Now, we can write individual rate rate. So, basically rate for this it would be k p m 1 dot concentration of m. Similarly, for this step I have rate k p m 2 dot m. Similarly, for this step I have k p m 3 dot m. So, the total rate of this I can sum up, I can add up to get the total rate, rate of propagation which is k p is common for all this case and I can add summation of i concentration of m i radicals and multiplied by m. So, this is the term 
which is basically the summation of all the radicals present in the reaction mixture and we write this term equals to simply m dot which is the concentration of all the radical species propagating radicals present in the reaction mixture. So, we can simply write this now R p is equal to K p into this term multiplied by the monomer concentration. So, we write this as uh, we will come back. Now, before that we will we can know that what is the rate of polymerization? Rate of polymerization is given by rate of disappearance of monomer. Now, monomer disappears in the initiation step and during all this propagation step. So, we can write rate, rate of polymerization is given by rate of initiation plus rate of propagation. This is rate of propagation. Now, as you can see only in the initiation step only one monomer disappears where in there are many many propagation steps we can actually consider this equivalent to R p. So, rate of polymerization is given by rate of propagation and we have already find out what is the rate of propagation which is given by K p total monomer total radical concentration multiplied by the concentration of monomer. Now, in, in the termination step, we have possible two way of possible termination one by this proportion one by coupling. So, we can um, in general we can write this where this k t is summation of these two steps and in this case the rate is given by the because the, this is the total m m dot and this is also m dot. So, basically given by square of this total radical concentration. Now, this term 2 is coming because each reaction is actually produces 2 polymers. Actually, it stops 2, it does not produce not necessarily produce 2 polymer chains, but it actually stops 2 propagating radical. So, this is the convention to use 2, some text actually not uses this two, but you will remember or you will recall this when we also talk about uh, the rate of initiation. So, we will stop here. We have discussed the rate of initiation, we have discussed rate of propagation and rate of termination and we will discuss how to basically find out this concentration of this term in the next lecture.